Now, would it be fair to say also um, that you, um, in compiling your report, you also um, compiled this report with an eye towards documenting the manner in which you administered the Alcatest machine, correct? The Alcatest test. Yes, sir. Now, you are also required to change the mouthpiece on the machine uh, before the first blow and between each blow. Is that true? That is true. Would it be fair to say that there is no, um, that there is nothing in your report to indicate that, in fact, you satisfy that requirement? May I look at my report? Would you please? No, sir, there's nothing in my report that says that specifically. Knowing that your training was that you should create a report that is truthful, accurate, and complete, would it be fair to say that your failure to note that you changed the mouthpiece in between tests, uh, before the first and in between the subsequent tests, um, would indicate that, in fact, that never occurred? Uh, no, sir. Did you consider the changing of the mouthpieces to be important to the proper administration of this test? Absolutely. And yet you uh, omitted that important fact from your report, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you also um, indicated that you did the, excuse me, that you accomplished the 20-minute period of observation, um, but I would note and ask you to look in your report as to whether or not there is any mention in there that you actually conducted a 20-minute observation of my client prior to asking him to blow into that machine. I don't see any specific uh, indication of that in my report. Okay. Now, officer, you indicated that at the scene my client was talking on his cell phone to someone, that he closed his phone and put it back into his pocket, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you are aware that it is pr police protocol and state police procedure that you remove all electronic devices, including cell phones, from the testing area prior to administering the Alcatest. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. Um, does your report indicate that at any time that you check my client for a cell phone and, or any other electronic devices and, in fact, remove them? No, sir. Um, do you consider the um, removal of cell phones and other electronic devices as per state protocol to be an important fact in the administration of the Alcatraz that you gave to my client on the evening in question? Yes, sir. But it failed to, you failed to put it in the report, which by your own testimony was a report that had to be complete in order to follow your training from the academy. Is that true? Yes, sir. Now, would it be fair to say also that um, you, you tested my client and got some results, correct? Yes, sir. Now, the I'm asking you to go back to S1, that is the motor vehicle accident report. Yes, sir. And the upper left-hand corner, oh, about two inches down, you have the date of the, as they call it, date of the crash as being April 3rd of 2010, correct? Yes, sir. That was a Saturday, was it not? Uh, yes, sir. And what time of day was the crash? Um, 2041. And 2041 would be what time? 841 in the evening. Thank you. Now, you um, also gave, in giving my client the Alco test, did you not also record the time of the arrest. Yes, sir. It's required that I put it into it. Now, you came upon my client at uh, approximately 841 in the evening? Uh, no, sir. It probably was about three minutes later by the time I was detailed and I got there. Um, you gave him and administered the field sobriety test, as we indicated, and you placed him under arrest and took him to headquarters, correct? Yes, sir. And approximately how long did that take? From the time I arrived to the time we left the scene or arrived at the station? Um, why, don't, why don't we go with the time that you left the scene? I would say that was maybe about 20 minutes. It took 25 minutes there at the scene. Okay. So it might have been about 9 o'clock, 9.05 um, when you placed my client under arrest? Maybe a few minutes later, maybe 9.10. Okay. And the Alcatest machine has a, a function, does it not, that requires you to enter into the machine the time of the arrest, correct? Yes, sir. And it also, by itself, through its own internal clock, indicates the time that the breath test was administered, correct? Yes, sir. So you got back to headquarters at approximately what time? 9.15, 9.20 9 maybe. Okay. And the Alcatest was administered to my client. And the first control test 
um, that was performed on that. I'm asking you now to turn to S4, the alcohol influence report. Yes, sir. Indicates the time of the very first uh, control test, correct? Yes, in the sir. process? Mm -hmm. And then below that, it indicates the time of my client's first breath test, correct? Yes, sir. And what time did, was my client, did my client first attempt to give a breath sample? At 2049. And that would be 849 p.m.? Yes, sir. Now, I noticed down below that on, on his second breath test, he was able to successfully give you a sample which was acceptable to the machine for a duration that was acceptable to the machine, correct? That's correct. And that was at what time? Uh, 2051 or 851 p.m. Okay. Now, up above, you entered the time of the arrest of my client, did you not? I did. And that would be under right after it says arrest time. That's something you had to enter manually, right? Yes, sir. With a keyboard? Yes, sir. What time did you put in as the time that he was arrested? 0920. First, I need you to turn to S6, if you would. Would you go to S6, which is the Alcatest calculator? Yes, sir. Um, what time did you obtain the final result from my client on the evening in question, going back to the AIR? If I were to suggest to you that the final result from my client was obtained with a breath sample that came at 8.54 p.m., would that be accurate? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now. On the Alcatest calculator, the Alcatest calculator is um, that part, that uh, device which calculates whether or not the readings are intolerance, correct? That is correct. The last sample that my client gave you was a little bit before 9 o'clock at night, correct? That is correct. How long does it take you to calculate, uh, to enter the figures into the Alcatest calculator to produce um, an answer as to whether or not the readings were intolerance? matter of a few minutes. Okay. And you did, you, in fact, you did enter those into the Alcatest calculator, all the readings, in order to determine whether or not the machine was intolerance? Yes, sir. Would it be fair to say that you did that at approximately 1030 at night? Yes, sir. Is there a reason that you waited until over an hour and a half after the administration of this test before seeing whether the results were intolerance? No particular reason. Now, I'm going to direct your attention, if you would, to the to S9. Yes, sir. Now, S9 is the Hamilton Township Police Drinking Driving Report, is it not? It is. Now, you made observations of my client that evening, correct? And you recorded them simultaneously therewith, or at least shortly thereafter, the arrest of my client, correct? That's correct. Now, this um, drinking driving report has to do primarily with the um, some biographical data regarding my client, some information regarding the incident in terms of times and location, and a checklist of observations that you made, correct? Yes, sir. Would it be fair to say that my client, even after an accident which you have called substantial and which produced heavy front-end damage to his vehicle, um, was neither standing rigidly, unable to stand, or continually leaning for balance? That's correct. Would it be fair to say that you were able to note no impairments, that is, no deficiencies in the manner in which he walked. Would that be true? Yes, sir. In fact, you not only did not note that he was staggering or grasping for support, um, but you did not even move, mark off that he was swaying. Would that be true? Under ability to walk, that's correct. Okay. Now, under demeanor, there are many numerous negative um, aspects of his demeanor which you could have noted, such that he was excited or he was indifferent to you or that he thought it was funny or that he was antagonistic. None of those negative attributes were attributed to him on the evening in question. Is that true? That's correct. He didn't um, punch, resist, thumb his nose or, or, or use profanity with respect to you that evening, did he? No, sir. You noted that his eyes were bloodshot and watery? Yes, sir. This, your encounters with him were in the mid-evening, correct? Yes, sir. Um, you did not ask him what time he awoke that day or how many hours he had been awake? No, sir. You don't know what his, his sleep patterns were the night before? No, sir. You don't know whether or not he had allergies because you didn't ask him the allergies which might have produced bloodshot and watery eyes, correct? Yes, sir. Now, um, his face was flushed but not pale? That's correct. And you detected the odor of an alcoholic beverage on his breath, correct? I did. The odor of an alcoholic beverage merely denotes to you that he consumed an alcoholic beverage, not that he consumed it to excess or the amount that he consumed. Would that be fair? Yes, sir. Now, up above, on the top right-hand corner of that report, about mm, four boxes down on the right, it asks what time of day, 
that this violation occurred, correct? Yes, sir. And in your handwriting, there are some numbers. Would that be true? Yes, sir. What numbers appear on the report as it exists today? 841. I ask you to look at that first number and tell me whether or not, when you initially prepared this report, you wrote in the number 8 or the number 9. I'm not sure at this time, sir. It would appear that that, num that first number was altered subsequent to its initial writing, does it not? Yes, sir. Officer, I'm going to ask you this. You never observed my client operating his motor vehicle that night, correct? Yes, sir. Um, even after heavy front end damage, my client was able to uh, stand um, without any difficulty and walk without difficulty, correct? Yes, sir. Um, when you asked him questions and gave him directions, he seemingly understood those questions and directions and either gave you an answer appropriate to those questions or followed your directions. Is that true? Yes, sir. You, ha you have no um, idea what amount of alcohol he had in the system at the time of his driving other than the reading given to you by the machine, correct? That's true. You don't know of your own knowledge whether the machine was properly operating tonight, you, that evening. You only know what was reported on the alcohol influence report. Is that true? Yes, sir. Now, getting back to your official police protocol, I ask you to go to S5, which again is the alcohol influence report, and ask you this. On the second page of that alcohol influence report, it requires your signature, does it not? Yes, sir. And it's required that you sign that page in order to indicate that you were the operator on the evening in question. Is that true? That's true. Now, is that your signature on the second page of S5? Yes, sir. And beneath that, is there a typed legend which is part of the Attorney General's form? Yes, sir. And does that say copy given to subject? Yes, sir. Isn't it a fact that you did not give a copy of that alcohol influence report to my client? No, sir. When you say no, sir, are you saying no, it's not accurate? Oh. No, I did not give him a copy. I apologize. Thank you. Please. Now, it is your training that the poli state police protocol requires you, that State versus Chun requires you to give a copy of this AIR to the defendant before he leaves headquarters and to make a second copy which must go into your file. Is that true? I can tell you I don't recall that being told specifically I had to give it to him. You did, uh, by the way, this, this form is accurate. The, the form that we have in front of us is accurate, is it not? It's printed out by the machine. And underneath, what, what meaning did you attribute to the legend under your signature that a copy was given to the subject? I figured his attorney would ultimately request it. Uh, he'd get it then. Thank you. I have no further questions.